Fuck, it didn't work. The man dodged me. What an absolute legend. He just got the speed, the reactions, just to get away from that. We'll work on that say, later. Before we got just visually impaired by the desk. That, yes. you know, hey, now all of a sudden we talked about it a lot, about Ghost being one of the more flexible teams in overall map pool. Uh, time to put up or shut up, essentially, because you got EG on, by far, one of their best map mode combos in this entire stage. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, their icebox has actually been really darn good since they brought this roster together in April. 75% win rate. Their two losses are in double overtime to FaZe and double overtime to Cloud9. So even when they've yeah. lost, they have been absolutely impressive. They're near 60% on both sides of the map. So this is definitely a map they're going to feel very much at home. But Ghosts are no slouches on icebox. They're also at 75% no. on the map for the year. Yeah, definitely uh, some formidability for both sides, that's to be sure. And I think it's also important just to kind of note, like, as mentioned, Ghost have largely deleted the Jet out of their compositional favor in trying mm -hmm. to get the raids yeah. involved, but in this time, it's going to be Nismo sticking with yeah. the KO. So I I'm looking for a one-for-one -one here, comparing the last map to this map. Nismo has to have a good map right here for Ghost. Yeah, again, he was like one of the few, I mean, that was the crazy thing about him is not only was he number one in almost every category in North America, but he was also the only guy who wasn't a pure duelist or chamber in those categories, right, yeah. basically, mm -hmm. you know, playing a lot of KO, and now you're seeing him play KO the entire series so far, but yeah, right, definitely a cold start on Breeze, we'll see if he can pick it up here, starting out in the defense, as we are going to see some B pressure from Evil Geniuses coming through long, but the bulk of their forces just leaving that Viper behind, as well as that trademark watching the A flank. Make their way over to yellow, no problem. Aldrone leading the way. Snake bite to kind Ooh. of slow down the typical plant spot. They're just going to push towards the back end anyway. And look at this. The distance they're getting. Oh, oh my God, Brock had no clue. How about it? Jojimo just immediately bursts forward Here. past the toxic screen. And now all of a sudden, how do you even retake this? I mean, you're only saving Godspeed. grapes if that Proto is still kind of in the mix, so to speak. But he's blocked off by a barrier orb. Oh, and he's able to actually catch up Bustio before he can rendezvous away. But the problem about this is, even if Ghost start to find eliminations, you still have to work through a funnel, essentially, on the backside of this barrier orb. The flank is in. Ghost a bit trapped. A barrier orb of their own will create a little bit of extra space, but Jojimo is quick to be over the top of this play. Or is he? Nismo with an elimination will allow the defense to move forward, but the problem the whole time was, how do you get here and do time? And the answer is, you don't. EG, staying resilient throughout their pistol. Dude, Jojimo is a freak. Just, yeah. Unreal, dude. Like, again, he has been one of the most impressive duelists in North America, making that role pivot onto this team earlier this year while they were making all their changes to the lineup. Obviously, he you know, had been a part of the team for a little bit longer, but now he's just fully you know, embracing this role with Bustio, fully embracing the chamber, and the guy just goes all the way in behind, flanks around Kitchen, gets his two kills, but often than that, outside of the two kills, he just buys time. Like He doesn't give Absolutely. them any comfortability to try to go for any sort of start on a defuse. Yeah, it's a really solid setup. I think just kind of how things were good for them in map number one and what very well could be wind conditions for EG here on map number two. Recon Bolt through the backside of the A site. Defensive Toxic Screen will put a little bit of a dividing line here into A, but largely speaking, no problem for EG because once again, it's Jojimo who's taking high ground positions on the Raptors. He has finally gets caught by John QT there. Might be a weapon. Actually, no, I don't think it dropped on their side of the wall, so they won't have it. Grabbed it. Yeah. And so they're able to just to back off now, and EG to just continue to play the post plants here on the back of the barrier. There is an escape there with the rendezvous as well, and so Ghost, while they're getting space, they still really have a way to get this defuse off. The thing about this is if Ghost can find these kills quickly, they will be able to hold numbers because there's a long point coming out of combat. He's not quite here yet. EG oh. need to hold on. Now, finally, yeah, why not? A little bit of Asuna-inspired... <laughs> <laughs> Rope play coming out of APOP, and EG will be able to take the second round. Did you see that he was also diffusing the spike on the rope? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you noticed that. It was between the two barriers, and, you know, in the one hand, you think maybe that would help him kind of avoid any type of utility that would land on the ground, but it also made his head easier to spot when EG goes back on the site through the ropes. I don't know if we catch, if we catch that, but it almost kind of backfired on him there. Honestly, made him yeah. easier to hit as they were coming across. That little bit of extra delay, once again, puts EG in a great spot to just overwhelm in and around the spike plants. This time, Ghost, really good setup from Nismo early to deny 
early plays, but what had the quick the aggression on the EG just right through tube. No one is able to find a trade. No one's even in a position for it. And a key position around Kitchen now goes the way of EG's offense, forcing John to have to put together a defense single handedly. This is unreal. Busio wow, on the dude. hat trick right now just brought. Dude, they literally ran through everything yeah. and just didn't give a flying you know what about any of it. I mean, really, they ran through a fragment. They ran through some other detection utility. I mean, they're just bulldozing through. And then they eventually get the trade due to the two push around the back of it. Brock trying to make a miracle happen okay, here. Does get it into a 1v1. So maybe, just maybe, there is a little bit of hope. But that spike's in such a dangerous position. He has no yeah. idea where this last member is. And Comp can see this in certain regards. Just by spamming. Yep, there it is. Good timing. Just making sure that Brock... Wow. Had to make a hold, and goodness me. I mean, the biggest thing it, it, when I was looking at this matchup was for EG, you got to get up early and stay up early. And they've been able to do that now for two maps in a row to start off this series. I mean, they're starting to approach like the 80% mark on pistol win success rate, by the way. Like, yep. it's been just kind of unreal. They came into the 77% from the group stage, and they're just adding on to that with these hot starts each and every time. It's just been so uncanny of them. And now they're about to have another 4 0 start. This is the exact same thing that happened on Breeze. They had a 4 0 start. Yeah, yeah. Unreal stuff, man. Honestly. <laughs> it, it just, just hit a whole other week. level than playoffs. A absolutely. It, and the thing about it is week five was like, oh, boy, ED. Like, are we going to be able to see you really put together much of a fight? And the answer so far has been a very convincing yes. Opening trades coming through. Josmo once again able to avoid the Hunter's Fury. Nice response from Dismo up top looking for the double, but it's the classic of Josmo that keeps the numbers with EG's offense, bro. What Dude, is happening? Not only did he dodge the Hunter's Fury, that was almost secondary to the attacking position he put himself in in the midst of all that. Like, yeah, sure, you could say really cool updraft combo to avoid Hunter's Fury, stay alive, but he also got forward with that, winds up on top of yellow, and gets a bunch of entries at long B. I mean... Just, the dude is just on another level right now. And again, he was already one of the top 10 players with Bustio yep. in NA for the group stage, and he's just continuing to push it forward. Man. He's just, I mean, no fear in his eyes, dude. None. Absolutely. And, I mean, that's to be kind of expected at this point after watching him over the course of this year, at least. But, but it's also kind of neat because some players, when you get to playoffs, they start to shy away from, mm, yeah. you know, that that uh, that aggression and that confidence. You know, again, this is a team that was 0-5. They didn't even think of playoffs last stage. But they've, again, made so many changes internally. And they're coming in with this swagger about them, man. Like, they don't even care that it's playoffs. It's another game for them, and they're doing so well. Well, Turtle has been completely trapped onto site. Brock next to him will also drop. So once again, defensively in the opening engagements, Ghost have come away with absolutely nothing, so to speak. Turtle, though, still has actually stayed through with this. Maybe a chance, but Jocko still reads it for the second kill. 5v3. Koala can find nothing with the opening op shot, and that's going to lead to an EG plant. I am just... It's just the speed at which EG are hitting right now is just so chaotic and so successful. Finally, Jojimbo was silenced though by Nismo on this rotation, but Reformed, who was such an ink on the previous map, living up to it here yet again on the site in the post plant, finds himself a second on the Koala. Now it's just up to Nismo while he will find Reformed. That spike has not been touched and Calm is still lurking around and he had no idea where exactly. Not going to use them, though. Wants to keep his position concealed. Nismo expecting the peak, but he actually looks away at the exact wrong moment. And come. Read another it like 1v1 a book that versus a Nismo that he rocks. Oh, man. I mean, that's tough because he didn't charge forward. He, he just banked that he wasn't sticking the defuse, and he was right. Yeah. He thought to himself, time. this guy has no idea where I am. Surely he doesn't stick it. And well, he was correct. He didn't panic. He didn't make noise. He didn't, you know, give Nismo the chance. He just played it out. Just kind of hedged his bets and winds up correct. And they're now up 5-0, likely 6-0 on the horizon. And they have all the alts. Literally all the alts. It's, it is the kitchen sink. don't even need them. Yeah. It's the kitchen sink. I mean... And again, I've never seen Ghost this flat in a series this whole no. last couple of months. I mean, the and biggest it, thing about it is, as initiators and controllers, that's been the primary focus for each composition that Ghost has put together. They find yes. so much value as a team, yes. and it's not there at all. EG is doing no. exactly what they were to do versus Optic. Now just essentially keeping them trapped and to spawn. And Apoth is searching for an ace. I mean, this is abusive dust.
Bro, this is annihilation. Again, Evil Geniuses have kicked themselves into a whole new gear in these playoffs against Ghost. And again, Ghost is a team that were so impressive through groups, man. So impressive. Again, some people say that cast is kind of a broken stat. And I agree it's a little bit hard because some things can kind of as an assist that it's just like a smoke blocking somebody right. or like a flash. You know what I mean? Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But still, when you have four of your five in the top seven for cast, that is saying something. Like, that is a, a level of consistency on how people play off of each other, you know, how you're able to just trade, how you're able to use your utility. And again, the desk highlighted this, I think, very effectively and very accurately that Ghost was a team that prided itself on strategy, on just solid fundamentals, on pacing changes, you know, being able to bring that into the fold. Um, just so well-rounded, I think, from like a macro perspective on, you know, how they could approach this game. And, and Evil Geniuses, you know, I think a part of their, their you know, success was obviously George Mo and Bustio being some of the best players in North America. But it was also like some of their creativeness, some of their little quirky plays they'd come Absolutely. up with. You know, but those gimmicks are usually going to get you like a round or two. And while they had solid fundamentals, in my opinion, they did not look from the eye test as polished as Ghost did. Like, I when agree. it came to, like, how well you run your default or how well you train to a site or how fine-tuned your timings are, while EG was certainly growing in those categories, I just thought that Ghost was a little bit superior from the eye test. But that has not been the case this series so far. EG, I mean, some of it has just been, like, Jojimo go run and kill people. It has been that, sure. But there's a level of support behind it. And yes. there's, there, there are and other conditions available if that you're, fails. You're getting that out of Reformed and Apoth right now. Yes. Reformed and Map 1, Apoth here in this map. And that's something that was not evident whatsoever in Week 5. So the fact that they've already been able to correct on this is incredible. I mean, look at this. I mean, Judge Mo, yeah. key position up top. Spike's already being planted. There's yeah. good support and utility around it. It, it just, no honestly speaking, you want to use the word perfection. Yeah, it has been great, but Nismo playing over That's here towards fun. long, able to catch one there. That's actually spiked down at the back of A, so hold the phone a second. EG find themselves on the back foot right now, and I don't know how they get the spike back, to be honest. Not with Quad Noob has yeah, his position. Yeah, it's got to be Apoth. Does catch Apoth has Don to open Cutie. up space mid-map. He's going to be able to get one. Nothing more on top of it, but Reformed wins a 1v1 over towards A, so now these defenders on the flank are going to feel a little isolated. So Brock will come forward to make sure mid stays clear. Reform going to stick for some sort of a res, but it's not going to work out for too much. And it looks like Ghost will finally get on the board. Reform just playing with him a little bit. While I'm happy to shut him down. And yeah, Ghost get up on the board, but it's still so much work that has to be done here from this defensive half. Yeah, that's one very small step on what has been the Everest climb. It feels like they're going to have to go on here to get things done. But hey, that is... At least the start. Operator in Kuala Noob's hands. Rifles for the rest. EG, though. We'll see if they keep that pace up. They are going to have that Viper's Pit to be able to, you know, use that to secure a site and post plant and try to slow Ghost down. Don't let them gain any momentum. And just for what it's worth, we've talked a lot about EG, obviously. <laughs> it's well merited considering the start for Ghost. These are rounds that you have to do wonders in because you were so good mm -hmm. in these full versus full rounds yeah. during the group stage if you were to put together a solid quote-unquote comeback on this first half it would have to be in rounds that look like this and qual new from the top side of yellow just misses a bit of timing but still converts huge first blood as drogmo falls indeed they still have another player at yellow that's nismo so they still have control over long b he flashes out looking for more does detect that there are still players there now kind of playing a bit of a crossfire a as he catches the under two push from Bustio, and there's this mode that you expect to see. The great decision maker, the crafty player that he is, starting to come alive now. Brock able to catch with John QD. Paul trying to come through middle. Good entry from Calm though, but Nismo continues yeah. to hold the ground that long and finally goes starting to find a little bit of footing here. And EG finally starting to get a little bit slowed down. But yeah, here's the thing. Desperate. I would expect a timeout soon here from Evil Geniuses to maybe kind of reconsider the tempo a bit and maybe try to turn the next page on the playbook. I think Ghosts are starting to get a read. Seconds left. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with it. It definitely feels like as far as contesting early, that that's where Ghost is going to need to really step up their game, largely speaking, from the playbook side of things. So Reform, 1v4 situation. Not a lot of time in the clock, and with the economy starting to turn around just a touch, you assume that he's going to try to just survive as long as humanly possible. Maybe a 1v1 with Proto here on the backside, though, to finish off the round. And depending on the timing, maybe it's another free kill to kind of key Ghost at bay, but Reformed is happy to hold his corner. 
So now comes the adjustment period, right? I mean, now it's, you know, on EG to maybe figure out, you know, what has Ghost been changing up defensively that we need to try to get around? I mean, it seems like Long B starting to be defended a little bit better now by Ghost. So Evil Geniuses aren't going to get that for free anymore. And really, they were getting tons of free space from Jojo both throughout mm -hmm. the early portion of this game. And, and now they're having to work a little bit harder for it. And so I'm curious if that just means they might slow it down a smidge and be play a little bit more just like presence and just try to, you know, kind of spread out a little bit, try to play the split pressure, or do you just send it one more time, you know, with mm. these weapons, which is Icebox is certainly well known for on the safe side of the map. Well, it'll be a tour de force on one side, blades on the other, as we stay on board with Jojimo, looking to see what he wants to do early. Proto will be the first point of defensive contact if there were to be a charge through. Unless Brock decides he wants to throw some of his utility that direction. Yeah, Proto's not even interested. Says, let's the Al drone be the defensive presence we need. Jodmo will delete it and then continue to move on forward. Any opportunities for first bullets? Oh. Yeah, sure, but not able to convert on a John, and that's almost all of the knives gone. Maybe one still remaining, but Ghost once again pushed back EG at their initial attempt. Yeah, trades though coming in from EG, even with the less weaponry in a couple of situations, but a Proto able to equalize it back up and hold off the pass, not allow them all the way onto the site. We are seeing EG perhaps considering bouncing back. They have this move from Com, but it's been detected by the trademark. Koala Noob, though, not really paying mind to it, and so he might get blindsided here, despite his trademark being popped. But now he's holding the angle, watching for that to press. So a big chance here for Koala Noob to get an edge, but misses. Now smoked off. For a little bit of support. There is a chance where you can actually push through this if you're Ghost. Maybe cut GG off guard on the rotation. That's indeed the case. Com will fall. Apoth still looking to set up some presence over towards A, and... Ah, the spike is actually going to rotate right behind us. This is going to lead to a planter yeah. dust. Yeah, a little bit of a kind of just making the best out of a terrible situation from EG being crafty here as they bring the spike back over. They left. have Apop holding the screen's rotation underneath balcony, and there's still a way forward for EG to win this mm -hmm. round. Now, yeah, they are a player down, but they have some good positioning over here towards screens. They just have to worry about you know so many angles at once. <sighs> Nice one v one comes out. Nismo able to take the dub. Uh oh. Jojimo did pull knives out, but will be suppressed for a small time. Proto on the long flank. Nismo double child from the front, and oh, he's just completely stuck. Or is he? Wait a second. Now gets the dash out. Opportunity maybe to get the angle in favor. Quality holding, playing bodyguard. Nismo holding the spike on the other side, and the one v one comes out. Quality takes the dub and goes just like that back to within three. It just really came down to that mid interaction. I feel like, right? I mean, they detect Com trying to make that play through kitchen with the trademark. They're able to hold him coming back through tube. They're able to catch him inside the poison orb at middle with the shorty. And while EG were able to kind of bounce their way into a plant A, they still use their man advantage in the flank to be able to come out on top. It's mm. now three in a row for Ghost. So finally finding a place in this first half, finally slowing down the machine that is Evil Geniuses, and now they are taking that time out to yeah. kind of reconsider what they want their attack and strategy to be, and Honestly, I would I would like to maybe see them just maybe just tone it down just a smidge. You know, just be a I mean, little more patient in some of these situations. The thing that's really been a difference maker so far is in terms of Ghost getting advantages in these early rounds largely has been off of Nismo. Uh, the fact that he's able to get these zero points for information or using some utility to create a little bit of early space. How, I think the big question mark is how does EG counter that? Do you just allow Nismo to throw utility for free and then you just essentially play full site retake and not use your early real estate that you've had kind of the luxury of using every single round in your first six or uh, i think that's got to be the large majority of the conversation here for eg because that's the advantage yep. that goes to have off the composition is that hey you've got a ko you've got an extra set of flashes than eg does i think it's just about using that owl drone to discover where that opera is you know if he's playing sure, top yeah. yellow or playing at long b start droning him out don't give him free initial picks to slow your attack down and then i think from there it's just Again, you don't have to hedge your bets on these quick pushes and then try to, like, scrap together something in the mid round. They, they can kind of, again, just tone it down a little bit, get back to basics, and, you know, just kind of squeeze their way into these rounds. Quick presence established for EG. Over through green. Recon dart will allow them to clear and move a little bit further forward, trying to put some threat over towards yellow, but look at Ghost aggressively through the A site. Trademark is in the way. Yep. Trademark will detect this. And Busio is indeed watching for it right now at the headhunter. And well he's done. able to connect there onto Nismo. And he's even looking for perhaps a second player. He does seem to have the idea that there might be more. He would be right. But that's a big kill for a res from John QT. 
<laughs> you can just see the Chaos Ray pop. Look left, look right, look left, look right. The rest of his teammates are in the front. Able to get a spike down and Apoth very well. Able to at least take down one more off the flank. The problem about this is this is a scattered buy for EG. And now into a 2v3 with just a Sheriff and a Stinger. How do you defend? This spike and reformed will give us at least some sort of an offer. This is going to play a corner. The timing of this peak may work out. Not quite the case. Shock darts on the way through. That'll chip away some of the damage, but it has to be good, glorious pistol shots, and it will not happen four rounds in a row for Ghost. Yeah, they are marching back forward on this map at a rapid pace. Again, EG did tone it down a little bit that round. They took Long B quickly. They you know, kind of sat back once they had the recon bolt come out and make sure that yellow was clear. Then they kind of came up on there with that wall to push to the back side of B side. So it was a little bit down pace. They caught onto the flank, but again, I think John Cutie getting the frag and getting the res was just so huge for Ghost on that A push to give them an advantage back on the retake. Dodge Mo also limited to just one frag, I believe, up top. So mm -hmm. really helped Ghost find their footing back. But EG is still able to full buy here. Have a couple of key alts in play as well. Viper's Pit and the Hunter's Fury. So definitely still pose a big threat in this round. But look yeah. at this. That's been a big difference too. Quality News had a couple of big opening sniper frags in some of these, these rounds that goes have been stringing together. It's, it's they didn't have early on. Yeah, it, it's EG just essentially walking forward into these positions, not using utility as you were talking exactly. about to try to clear off those opening angles. So it's almost as if ghosts are sitting there saying, we'll beat your aggression with our aggression, at least exactly. in certain regards. If you're going to give him free angles, he's going to take them. Yeah. He's been successful with it on multiple fronts. Dodgemo, though, back onto the full entry, able to get that frag onto a proto, and they're going to be able to get this spike moved into B site before the rotation can get there. Or at least it appears that way in this 4 and 4 and indeed there's the plant. Hunter Stream might look at this rupt. And Qualinub is actually in a pretty good position to try to convert off of this, making sure there's no exits back towards yellow. So this is good information for Ghost. Not just because you've got the numbers on a 4v3, but you should know that no one's on the backside of yellow. So when it comes to breaking down this post plant, your intel on where it's set up should be solid. The question now is, can you convert off that information? EG playing very reserved on the back side of this. Likely using They're relying on a post Hunter's night Fury. Night. First shots come through. Performed now from the front. Has to find something. Nothing will happen. And Com is just way out of the play. Hunter's Fury good for some damage, but no problem Not for Nismo and the rest of the team to get the defuse. Yeah, Apoc got caught before he could drop any snake fights on the spike. The combo with that Hunter's Fury going to try to come up with the win. And again, I think the scary thing about that is, is you have Apoc playing a mid lurk while he has pit. Like, I, I think you need him in the mix, controlling B-Site, dropping the bit down to make that retake more labored than it was. I mean, they were able to get all the space through spawn that they wanted because there's no pit down to, you know, make it tough on them to pay mm, their way yeah. forward. So yeah. I, I don't like the idea of Apoc playing that mid lurk with Snake Bites when he has pit available. I think that was a little bit of a misstep, but maybe they can put it together here on this final round. But again, you got to give credit to Ghost to just build this thing back from 06 down to now yep. uh, maybe going to tie this thing up before the second half starts. A good look at Proto as he will get the orb to earn him the defensive Viper's Pit, which will be the barrier between EG and this A site to start. The EG are still going especially over the top of it, and old Trojimo collapse over a double. But they're able to flush out Proto at the same moment, so all of the defensive presence for Ghost immediately foiled, and EG can set up for a post plant. They do have that Viper's Pit available, which will get dropped now. Barrier Orb also enforcing this plant, and they have the four on two man count, so literally everything going their way. Oh, but Quan in the back shuts down Com. So now a potential pinch play in the mix. But how do you move further forward if you're Koala New, especially with the Vipers put in your way? You have to get a 1v1 towards his left. Shots missed from Bustio. Uh oh. And then the reveal comes out. Oh, it's all gone wrong. It's just down to one below. Reform can do nothing. And Ghost sneak away a 2v4 post plan. Dust to get us to 6 6. That is unbelievable, man. I can't believe EG have dropped the ball on that one. They had everything going their way with man count, with alts, with positioning, but somehow, some way, Ghost march forward into a tie. What a wild ride. We'll see how it concludes after a short break.
It was a tremendous start for Evil Geniuses on what is their map pick here of Icebox. Six in a row. Immediately counter, though, after a key timeout at a ghost. Gets us to a 6 6 half. We swap the sides. And once again, we start to throw questions into what is the identity and tempo of this half going to look like here, Dust. Yeah, this is uh, this is an interesting game, that's for sure. I mean, you start with the Breeze upset from Evil Geniuses, and you start with them just bulldozing forward on the attack to kick things off. But Ghost have equalized, but it's back to pistols for EG. Their, their strength as a team throughout the group stage has been these very rounds. Chance to get the early lead back, perhaps. Look at Evil Geniuses. They beat the timing of some of this utility to keep possession of Yellow. Everyone's so worried about reform, they forget about what possibly could be the backside of Yellow. Oh, it's so good from EG. Three for one goes the exchange. John trying to get out and will be able to extend his life, but another flawless opening to this pistol from EG. Yeah, that's a way to kick yourself back into gear after coughing up a 6-0 lead. Is to just come back to, you know, your bread and butter pistol rounds and find it. As this trademark will detect ghost trying to come back through to to kitchen they have two to a site so they have basically their tabs on everything you know they're not yeah. going to have anything pulled out from underneath them just got to hold their ground as it looks like there is going to be a mid push but come holding the angle waiting for it Standing ahead. doesn't overcommit all you need it's all you need information Keep him at bay. Don't drop another 2v4 if you're real genius. Boost over the top. Not going to quite work out. John was hoping to have a teammate with him, but Proto flips off the edge. And Combo will finish him in this place. No problem. EG, I hate to keep saying it, but there's a reason why they're number one in pistol, and we've seen it now. <laughs> Three out of the four rounds. I mean, they're crushing it. They have definitely kept that a constant. Coming over from the group stage, no doubt about that. Now they will be able to buy up on the back of that. Spectre is a plot T. Sheriff for Bustio. Marshall for Jojimo. No real investment here from Ghost. Maybe some utility at best, but certainly not looking to pick up any weapons. And so right. EG should be able to waltz into an 8 6. Similar setup here for EG around green. The difference this time is that there is a second member in the form of Boostia that's looking to play a bit of a trading cross angle. And it's going to work out. Wants to force a second gunfight. Not quite able to connect, but first blood is more than enough for EG. Yep, gets away with that head hunter. Retreats back into sight. Jojimo now gets aggressive over towards the middle. It's going to spot Koala Noob and does hit him pretty hard there with the marshal. Meanwhile, Boostia is still holding angles on sight. Has some support as well from Reforms. And Calm, who's made the rotation over. So everything, again, covered well by EG. Not really giving Ghost an easy time getting onto site and getting a spike down, that's for sure. Yeah, it, this is really well done from EG. You back off just enough to essentially invite Ghost into the toxic screen coverage, hoping that you can maybe force them into open positions. Now the utility's starting to really come to life for EG. Screen goes back up. Reform moves forward. No problem there. Four for Reform. It's a prime gaming flaws for the first time in this series, at least, for EG. Yeah, been a very scrappy series, that's for sure. But that time, EG comes out on top flawlessly. But now here's the buy-up from Ghost, who, again, is the best team at winning when they have economic advantage. And so that's really key on these first gun rounds to be able to, you know, try to flex that, not allow there to be too much separation. The thing is, I'll say, though, is while Ghost came into these playoffs, again, the best team at winning when they have economic advantage, we see a lot of 4-0 starts from EG this Absolutely. series. And so yep. I think that's been a huge thing that's really helped out EG in this best of three. Yeah, and those adjustments, we really do see kind of be evident by way of the stats for groups versus what we're getting kind of numerically in these first couple of the maps out of EG, at least for now. First blood, though, tallied for Ghost on this office. Who's still the one to fall? So a little bit of extra pressure here for EG's defense as you won't have the blanket of not only the ability to kind of rendezvous back, but no trademarks will be able to help kind of watch over these sites. But that said, Dust, EG are taking a step forward. It's going to work out great. And he gets the Vandal. And yeah. he gets away with really no stress put on him. Again, there's a three-man defense from EG already on B site, ready to go, while mid still continues to be patrolled by Jojimo. Good entry, though, from Koala Noob. will start kind of taking some of that away. Ugh. Calm kind of gets caught with his pants down a little bit there, trying to throw off a recon ball. Now it's all on Jojimo. Gets a kill, but still has a 1v3 ahead of him. Keeps the high ground the whole way. Post-plant set up largely through yellow with John watching the cross. Jojimo's going to have to hit. Unbelievable shot. Sees the first peak. Tags come out, but then 
the remaining ghost post plant comes to life and it's quality with four in the round as ghost able to respond and keep it tight indeed they are not allowing eg to have the crazy start to the half this time keeping things close a little bit dicey early on with the mid push from Jojimo, but Ghost able to come onto site and trade out really well. Tom getting caught off guard there on the timing. And pretty much a clean sweep from that point forward from Ghost as they are on the verge of tying this thing right back up. EG though have the op and Bustio's hands and four rifles everywhere else. So this is a big swing round play, potential here. Play. Two to force comes out on the opposite side. Bustio still holding for an early angle, but the zero point will force him to have to back off. And that'll be Ghost now moving forward in through green. With a little bit of presence here at Tube, this definitely could turn into something, but you have to assume that the large majority of this focus is to what can you find in an opening over towards the A site. But Kuala would be actually careful here. You could get trapped out. Recon Bolt not going to find much. The spam comes out. Proto is weak, but Ghost yeah. will survive. Yeah, he was trying his best to try to make sure that they thought it was just him there and that a proto was not a part of this picture a proto though still winds up being a casualty some damage but still holds that two presence watching to see if anyone will peek it let's go so certainly trying to implement mid quite a lot here early on this yeah. attacking side which again it's kind of a spot on the map that attacking teams often kind of gloss over other than maybe lurking it late or they just kind of focus on the site hits we are indeed seeing the hit come into play right now mm. bustio forced off of the angle, allowing Ghost to take control of the site and start getting the spike down. Jojimo trying to spot something what? around this toxic screen actually does find out Brock. The spike gets planted. So can this post plant for Ghost survive? Largely off of we have to imagine Fall Doom hitting a shot and he's gonna get his knees taken off by Bustio. Proto now through the middle of the map. Defensive wall comes down, but Nismo challenges it early. That'll stop this retake, at least initially, but not well enough. As the trades are very quick to come through and it's EG. Now back to within two, up to 9-7. Yeah, really well done there from EG. Even when they were getting threatened on all fronts and getting pushed back and not really getting those initial duels that they were looking for, kept their wits about them and able to break through in the end. I mean, such a crazy shot from Jojimo into Brock through kind of like this little crack in the toxic screen he was trying to use for a little bit of intel. I don't know if he maybe caught just a little bit a vision on Brock to get the read that he could spam through. Either way, that was the catalyst that the team needed to start bulldozing through and extending that lead to 9-7. And if they win this round, Ghost run out of economy. Yeah. This is such a dangerous round for Ghost. Absolutely is. Especially with the rounds getting limited as far as how many there's going to be to play with here. They're getting Before slowed down again, so hard. Early. Yeah. That's going to be fine. Even the knife is going to get deleted. This is lack of information. The null command is going to be sent out blindly by Nismo. And the defense is here. They're ready for this 100%. But it's going to be even exchange. Nismo down. Can you keep him down? That's the real question. Do you challenge oh, this? It comes in. Sure, why not? He gets two. Nismo brought back to life. But the damage has been dealt. And there was an even bigger gap this time on the Toxic screen on the top hand side. And Kong absolutely exposes it, denying the res. Actually, Nismo does get brought up. But still, at such a heavy cost. There's still a man down. They're worried about getting pushed through Kitchen now as well, because they do not have info there any longer. And this is getting very dangerous, and now Com finds out Koala. Oh, man. What a key difference maker Com has been in so many of these clutch-up moments. He'll get the benefit of four in the round, and all of the <laughs> setup that you're talking about when it comes to building a dire conversation towards Ghost is now immediately here. Down 7 to 10. They'll be on pistols. It's just this Toxic Screen's getting abused by yeah. EG. The fence, look at this. That's such a big gap. Like they had no idea he would have that type of pull. And while the res comes out again at such a big cost with the crack there, the flank from Bob New gets red inside tube. I mean, EG just have everything dialed in. And now they have Ghost on a low buy. Oh, boy. Now maybe a little bit of speed from EG, but Chachimo will hold. And Ghost are going to run right towards Bustio. At least in some regard. How do you open up space and get him off this angle? That has to be the consideration here for Ghost. They're going to wait a little while longer. There's the zero point. First shot connects, though. Chachimo next. Beat. No problems there. And Ghost is going to do nothing. Now the flash comes in as well. The Furley put the pressure on them, not allow them to get this spike. Jojimo comes forward and then backs off again, just not allowing them to get in for free. 
Res comes in as well for Apoth, and now here comes the Wrecking Crew. Jojimo, the tip of the spear, looking for his fourth. As it's just Nismo in the back, and he will go down to the shorty, and that is 11 for EG. One away from map and series point to not go down to the lower bracket. What and a Jojimo game. Is, <laughs> he's just doing Jojimo things, yes. brother. <laughs> he, he really is. Dude. He really is. Holy. I mean, we'll again. Get the help this time. I, I think that's the biggest key. Sure. Not just to be finding success from Jojimo. He's getting so much help from Apoth and Com. Yeah, it was reformed in the first map that was having a hell of yeah. a time, and now yeah. Apos come up huge on this map. So, yeah, the supporting cast has definitely been there. But, again, the talk of a lot of the group stage was kind of this battle between Jojimo and Nismo for the top. I mean, these guys are neck and neck in so many different categories when it comes to things like ACS and KPR and ADR and all those and, you know stats you really kind of look at to see individual impact and, you know, dueling and, and how they're able to come up with those key impact frags to make things happen and... It really has been Jojimo really kind of maintaining that pace in these playoffs. Yep. Whereas Nismo had a couple of cold starts, if we're honest. You know, Kuala Noob certainly had his moments throughout this map up to 16. He's definitely been sure. there. But not only that, but again, EG just look like they've kind of hit like that next level. Like they look a lot more polished in, in the groups, in my opinion. And they weren't even bad in groups, but it just looks like they fine tuned things even more. I think the biggest reason why is that it's it's not just off raw aggression or heroic moments where Bustio is kind of solo locking down sites. It's been in the form of how they beat Optic, which is stopping Ghost from getting even the first step forward. Yeah. And they've stopped them on initiation and control battles. It feels like almost every single time, especially from the defensive lens. Oh, this slow arm is going to cause so many problems. This calm immediately follows up oh the Hunter's God. Fury, and that's a great first blood. Brock tried to respond, but this is blind, and it's it missing. Is. It is. Koala, though, catches Reform, still trying to peek. And so while this has been stalled for some time, over at Long B, eventually Ghost are able to break through Koala, though, on such low health, and John Kitty's not allowed to heal him. So that is oh, going to make him a vulnerable target for later. In the meantime, Jojimo pushes down through middle, finds that very vulnerable target I was referring to, getting main advantage back for EG, and they have them pinched now at Long. Flash comes out. Tom peeks through it, and why not? Oh my goodness, evil geniuses, what have you done? Stealing just, away Ghost's pick and now just complete dominance through Icebox. It's just tough, a tough spot that EG has put Ghost in that long B because they're playing this deep barrier orb. And if you're Ghost, you don't want to allow him just to settle in with that because that just means he can anchor it and then they can just heavy stack A in middle and then you bouncing back is going to become a problem, right? So they want to contest that wall right away with the Owl Drone, you know, spamming it down. But the issue is, is while they're putting so much focus on that, Jojimo's been able to come through middle mm -hmm. multiple times now throughout this game and be a real nuisance. And eventually he just kind of pinched him on B. They had no fallback option. Man. What a night and day difference from week five to this first playoff match for Ichi. Aldrone denied. Go still looking to move forward, at least initially. How about EG once again going to meet them at the front doors? They actually get completely missed by the zero point, but it made much of a difference because Kowal Nubu will get the first two entries. Tom looking to hold off. Resurrection coming out, and that will force Tom to peek. Bustio to try to follow up, but he's going to have to hit more than just the first shot, and he'll be pushed off the angle. Yeah, Ghost able to kind of weather the storm. Able to get this wall down and put the spike in play. It's just Bustio and Reform trying to retake two versus four. One up top from Rafters. Here comes that screens rotation from Reformed. Busio trying to catch vision. Try to create that opening. It's just not been there, though, as Nismo will find it. And he's just good for one as John QT will keep Ghost lingering in this map. But they still have such a tough road forward to force the overtime, to force a map three. We have just not really... I mean, they, yeah, they strung together six in a row in the first half to come back and tie mm -hmm. things up, yep. but... More often than not, they haven't really had that consistency in the series to really build something, to really make the, the full push to take a map. And the bank is just so healthy for EG. I mean, they're going to be able to afford for the next three rounds, so Ghosts have to be more than convincing here if they were to try to get this thing to an you overtime. To play? Let's play. Early little boost for Jojimo. Reform there to support to make sure he doesn't have to worry about any oh openings. And oh my, no intel's going to sneak this out whatsoever. And Jojimo will be happy just to burst back into the safety of the defensive side of the side in a 5v4. He's gotten away with so much this series, man. Just Absolute murder. Every time he's gone for a play like that, he 
seemingly never gets caught. And that's really been a part of Ghost's downfall, I feel like, throughout this series. It's just not being able to pick up on that at times. We are going to see Brock still trying to push forward anyhow. Still trying to put the pressure on the site. But not able to find the pick. EG playing very disciplined at the backside of A. Not giving a little too much. Lucio pressures middle, but doesn't stay around more than he's welcomed. The knives largely get extended. Oh, Qualadoob gives away his position by way of the long barrel of the Tour de Force. It doesn't make too much of a difference. He's actually able to both find a kill over the Kong. Oh, how about this aggressive play out of Qualadoob? It's not going to work out, though. Last hope is the Proto. He gets caught at the top, but he still finds the opening double to this. It'd be a 1v4. Oh, and he my should goodness. know that Bustio is lingering on the rafters. The question will be, where is Apoth? Left. He has no idea. Viper Spit, though, will help him along. But fuses Ooh, it as what? a fake to catch Apoth out. And now he has a 1v1. Spike is inside the pit. He can play around it. Bustio is looking the right way, but can't win the fight anyhow. And what a play from a proto to save the day. I, oh my goodness, that is nasty. I mean, yeah. talk about a heroic moment for the Red Bull Clutch here. I mean, the fact that he even gets down from the top of Jenny's in the first place is a borderline miracle, but you called this perfectly. You bait out the Viper's Pit. Reed, where Apop was, and he was the only one that was kind of a miss in the entirety of that, all of the, the full clutch moment. So now all of a sudden, everyone can still afford for Ghost, and maybe there's a chance with that clutch to get this to a two-round game. That could be the breath of fresh air that goes. Need. They'll need three more, though, to force the overtime. And EG still have the full buy here with Bustio having toward the force. Double sniper set up with Jojimo, also on an operator playing A side of the map. Bustio dodging that owl drone gets a good angle here. I think Nismo gets the information that he's here. Yeah, it is able to avoid the zero point. But again, it's pushed off the angle early. The question will be, how do you continue this play forward, though, for Ghost? Because even though they get control over a green, getting onto site has largely been the bigger problem. Oh, no! Oh, oh, my goodness! Bustio saw a pixel of Nismo. Ends up turning into a headshot wall bang. He's not done! He's not done! A second comes through, and he's still going to hold his ground. He's got good help, and why not? If he's hitting shots like this, oh, and Finally. the easy one is the one that he missed. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a tough one. He hit some impressive ones, only to miss that one a little bit uh, anticlimactic, I guess you could say, but he's still done well to wedge something left. into the side of Ghost, and now Khan will build off of that. It's a three-on-two spike. Still yet to go down this B-side. Performed is close. Khan playing deep. Information on the Khan as he does get a little bit of a peek over to the backside, but performed. Looking to play for an exit off of the plant. John's going the opposite side. We'll connect. Now it's just down to John. Any heroics out of you? Good read over Kama's position. Takes the 1v1, but it's Jojimo from the side. And it's evil geniuses into a matchup that so many people thought Ghost was going to have arguably maybe no problem with how tactfully sound they've been. But EG set their tempo, their pace, and how about it, Dust? We could just go ahead and say it. They beat Ghost at their own game. Yeah, and they did it in such a crazy way. They snap an 18-game winning streak from Ghost on Breeze. Then they come into Icebox, which is a strong map for them, but it's a map that Ghost don't mind playing in their own right. They've had success on it in their last few games, and they just, again, they looked like they've taken just another step in their development as a team. And, and it's, it's been beautiful to watch them throughout the groups kind of come up with these cool little plays here and there. 